Okay then my friends, so we're nearly done with this little application, but there's just one more little thing I want to do before we call it finished. And that is to make a couple of reusable drop-in styled UI widgets. So, first of all, why? Well, if we take a look at the project so far, we'll see a few different text widgets floating around. And at the moment, we don't really add any custom styles to them. We just use the default material design styles given to us. And that's fine, but a lot of the time you do want to style your body text, whether it be the color, font weight, size, font family, etc. So to do that, we'd add a style property to the text widget and we'd set its value to be a text style object. Now inside here, we could add all those different properties. For example, we could add a color property to give the text some kind of brown color, which matches the rest of the design. So for that, we can say colors.brown and then 900 in the square brackets, which would be a dark brown. We could also specify a font weight and set that to be fontweights.bold, and that would make the text bold in this case. And we could also finally give this text a font size by using the font size property and then setting it to be something like 18. So that's cool. We've styled this text, but now we'd also have to style every other text widget we make too to match those styles. And that would take time. It would be laborious. It would mean a lot of repetition. So there's a couple of different ways to combat this. The first way would be to dive into theming and using a custom theme for the Flutter app. But I think this approach is probably over the top for such a small and simple application. So the second way, which is what I'm going to show you, is to make some reusable drop-in UI components, which are all pre-styled like this, and then just using them when we need them. So I'm going to do this for two different things, the text and also buttons. So then let's start with a styled body text widget. So what I'm going to do is come to the lib folder, and you could put this in a folder called shared or something like that. I'm not going to bother because we're only going to create a couple of these. I'm going to call this styled underscore body underscore text dot dart because that's what this is it's going to be styled body text now inside here i'm going to create a stateless widget so stl tab and i'm going to call this styled body text like so and then it is actually going to take in another argument and that is the text itself because think about this if we use this widget somewhere in our application we don't want to hard code the text down here. We want the user to be able to pass in as an argument the text that we want to output. So we have to accept that as an argument right here as well. So it's just going to be a positional argument. So we'll say this dot text and then a comma. If it was a named argument, we'd place it inside these curly braces. And then down here, we're going to say final string text. So what we're saying is, look, this right here, we're going to pass in this argument and I want you to basically update this value inside the class with whatever we pass in and it has to be a string and then once we've passed it in it's final so we can't change it within this class then all right then so what do we want to return down here well we want to return a text widget at the end of the day so we can say text like so and then the text we want to output we'd normally place in a string here well we want to output whatever text a user passes in as an argument so this thing right here so we can output the text then we need a style property which is going to be a text style and inside the text style we can then specify what styles we want this to be so what i'm going to do is go back to the coffee press page or was it the home page yeah it was this one right here so we have these styles right here i'm going to copy all those and i'm just going to paste them in right here scoot those back a little bit all right and that my friends is pretty much it i think so basically now Whenever we want to use these kind of styles for our text, we just use this styled body text instead of doing all of this stuff right here, like adding a style property, then a text style, then these different things. So now I could delete all this and instead I could use a styled body text. If I can click on this, it's going to import it for me. So you can see it imports it right up here. Make sure you do that. And then all we need to do is pass through the text and that text was how I like my coffee, how I like my coffee, I cannot type at the minute. And this can be a const like so. All right, so if we save that now, we can see how I like my coffee is still there. It's still styled the correct way because it applies all those styles to it. Awesome, so now we can just use this styled body text widget wherever we want now. So let's do that for 
these two things as well. Let's go back to the coffee prefs uh, page and there should be text here, yeah. So we'll change this to styled body text. Click on that to auto import this up at the top. Yep, there we go. And then we can do the same thing for the other text. I'm gonna copy that so I don't have to type it out again. Super laser, paste and paste. All right then, so now we should get the styled body text right here as well. And you'll see it for the sugars message too. Awesome. So that's the first reusable component that we've made. And although this is a very simple example, it does kind of highlight how much easier it is to do this than to apply these styles all over the show inside our templates. All right, so now let's move on to the next example. And this time what I'd like to do is make a reusable button widget. So currently inside this file, Coffee Press, we have a button down here with some styles applied, and we also have one up here with styles applied as well. Now, what I'd actually like to do is add more styles, and I'd have to do that in both places, and if in the future, if I had more buttons, I'd have to do it in those places as well. So instead, we create one widget with those styles applied, and then we can just use that widget wherever we need a button in the application. So let's go over to the lib folder, create a new file, and I'm just going to call this styled underscore button dot dart. And then inside here, we'll create a stateless widget like so. And we'll call this styled button. All right. Now I'm going to just get rid of the body text file. So we've got some more room up here. Also the home page because we don't need that anymore. All right. So let's save this now and let's flesh out this component or rather this widget. So first of all, what arguments do we need to take into this style button? Well, let's have a look. So we have these styles, but we don't need to pass those in as arguments. We're going to just hard code those styles right here. But we also have a child, which is the text we want to show on the button. So I guess we have to pass this in, this text string right here as an argument, because otherwise we're going to be hard coding that for every single button. And we don't want that. And also we need to pass in a value for a function that's going to get called when we press on the button. So we don't want to hard code a function right here and do the same thing every time a button is clicked. We want to pass in a different function each time because we have two different functions here, right? We have increase sugars and increase strength. And for those two different buttons, we want to pass in those two different functions. So the two arguments we need really are a child, which is just going to be maybe either a text widget or maybe it could be just the text itself right here. I think we should pass in the actual child, which will be a widget. And then as a second argument, we need the on pressed argument, and that's going to be a function. So let's go back over here and let's add these in. So what I'm going to do is make these named arguments. So inside the curly braces, we'll declare these. All right. So after super.key, we'll say there's a required argument, and that's going to be this dot on pressed, and then a comma. And then we need another one. So required this dot child. Now they're both required because we need a child and we need an unpressed um, parameter for each of these buttons. We can't not have them. So let's define these down here as well. We're going to say vinyl widget child. So we're saying that the child that we pass through is it has to be a widget basically. Now that could be a text widget or maybe an icon widget or something else, but it has to be a widget. And then also this one right here on pressed, we can say final. And then we want to type out a function. So we're going to say void because the function shouldn't return anything. And then function like so, and it's called on pressed. So this is how we type out a function. We're saying a function which returns nothing. So void, and that is the type of this thing right here. Okay, so now we can flesh out the actual button. So let's get rid of this thing right here. Now we're going to use a different type of button right here. We're going to use a text button. So let's click on that if we can. There we go. Oops, not worked. Text button. All right, let's just do it ourselves like so. And then inside this text button, we're going to have a style property first of all. And that's going to come from text button dot style from. So this was a convenience method I showed you earlier on in the course. And then we can just pass in the different styles into this. Now I'm going to just copy and paste a couple of these styles. So let me grab those and paste them in here. They're just the background color and the foreground color. But also what I'd like to do is make it so the button isn't completely rounded like this, but give it a smaller border radius. So it's more like a rectangle. Now we can do that by using the shape value here. And if we take a look at this shape, 
it has to be an outlined border. So there's different things that returns an outlined border. And actually, if you just do a call on here, you can take a look at the list of these things that return a border right here, yeah? Now, the one we want is gonna be a rounded rectangle border right here. So let's do that. And inside this, we need to specify a border radius. And the border radius is gonna be a border radius object. If you hover over this, you can see border radius geometry. So we can say border radius right here, which returns border radius geometry. And then we can say dot all to apply border radius in all directions. And inside here, we need to pass through a radius. Now we can't just pass through a number. We have to use radius like so, and then a type of radius. Well, it's gonna be circular, and then it's gonna be five, five pixels. All right, so we can apply a const right here to get rid of that blue squiggly line. And now the shape of this should be a rectangle with a border radius of five. All right, so we have this text button, but we get an error because we require a couple more fields. We need an unpressed parameter and also the child one as well. Now we accept those as arguments. So we can come down here and say that unpressed is just gonna be whatever we pass through, which is this thing right here, unpressed. And then also for the child, the same thing. So child is just child, what we pass through right here. And that's pretty much it. We have now completed this drop-in widget. So now we can use it inside this coffee prefs file instead of the filled button. So I'm gonna get rid of that filled button and instead I'm gonna say styled button. Click on this to make sure it gets imported right at the top up here. Okay, so style button doesn't require this style anymore because we've already hard coded all of that. And now we just need to pass through the unpressed value, which is increased strength and the child. All right, so let's do the same thing for down here. So we have this fill button, change it to styled button and get rid of the style itself. And now we should see those new buttons over here. Awesome. All right then my friends, so that is the end of this Flutter Crash Course. I really hope you enjoyed it and hopefully now you feel much more comfortable getting started making your own Flutter applications. Now this course was actually just the very first chapter of my much longer Flutter Masterclass course, which you can find on the Net Ninja Pro website right here. So if you wanna take your Flutter skills right up to Ninja level, then definitely check out this full course. I'll leave the link to it down below the video. Now in this course, you're gonna learn much, much more about Flutter, including things like theming, more advanced layouts, user inputs, adding multiple routes and screens, um, global state management, working with a database, and also adding animations as well. So tons of stuff to learn. Now during the course, we're gonna build a brand new application from scratch, which looks something like this. It's a character creation app for some kind of futuristic RPG or something, where you can make new characters, you can give them a name, and also a slogan, and you can also choose a vocation for them, etc then all of your characters that you create will get listed on a home screen. Now you can swipe them to delete the character, but you can also click on each one to find out more about that character. Now inside this character detail screen, you can also assign attribute points, choose an active skill. You can also set the character as a favorite if you want to as well. And then you can save the character so it updates in a database. So it's a really fun project to make and it demos a lot of really important Flutter features and topics. So there's absolutely loads to learn from it. So you can get the whole course now for just $10 on this very page, or you can sign up to a monthly NetNinja Pro membership and get instant access to this course, plus all of my other masterclass and premium courses as well for just $9 a month. And your first month is half price when you use this promo code right here. So. I'm gonna leave the links to both of these two pages down below the video. Anyway, my friends, I really, really hope you've enjoyed this course so far. Please do not forget to share, subscribe, or like the videos. That really means a lot. And hopefully I'm gonna see you soon on the full Flutter Masterclass. Yeah.